It's the same one that Chris Harrison had from the bathroom. <laughs> okay, well, uh, are we good to go with the recording, Owen? Okay. Um, we'll do item five, and then we will jump back to the Victus Advisors um, report. So adoption of the water shortage response plan. Mark, it's, all right. that's all right. It's queued so up. If we start the motion now, we have finished by the time he gets back. Oh. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, what? No. I think he wants to be involved in this one. But he's, oh. he's in the driver's seat. <laughs> well, you can be seen on camera over this, there. This, oh, so yeah. this ordinance is like a four or five part ordinance. One of the components is talking about um, <coughs> how do we reduce our water use with the you know, tracking with rates. And that's where Mark, I think, will jump into that when it's appropriate. So let me just give a brief overview. So this ordinance first adopts the water plan that we presented a draft to you at the retreat. This will be the final version of the plan. Um, number two, depending on the discussion with the, with the rates for the rest of this year, it would adopt those uh, tier reductions, according to whatever that goes. Uh, number three, <coughs> We made some additional adjustments to Title VIII, the, the Water Utilities Ordinance, that, that codifies some of the recommendations that were in the water shortage response plan, such as, you know, basically saying year to year we may adjust the irrigation duration, uh, start later and early, we may adjust the rates, we may declare water shortages. So those are the code amendments. You can look at them, they're pretty straightforward. There were only like three or four short paragraphs. Um, and then number four, for the remainder of this calendar year, it suspends enforcement of the landscaping requirements so that people are not trying to install water intensive new turf. Uh, so they, they now can say, you know what, we're telling them don't do it, we're not going to hold you. Uh, and then number five, as we discussed at our hey, retreat. Quick, can you confirm, it's, it gives them the option. They Correct. don't have to, but if they want to, because actually the best time to play, plant your grass is September 15th, because then the snow and stuff exactly. will Exactly. And it winterizes it. I, I talked to a future resident today who's still going to install it this fall. Right. Right, because it's the perfect time in the fall, because then it goes dormant, yeah, and right. then it'll seed in but the spring. I asked my culinary to... For a couple weeks. For a couple weeks to, yep. you know, augment the nice yeah. They could. If, if they want to do it with a hose, but they can't right. connect it to the... Yep. Okay. Temporary suspension optional. Okay. Right. Con consistent with what you guys have always directed us, we create the parameters, but we always leave the freedom to the residents to make their choice, whether those are financial choices or what. Great. Thank you. Um, and then number five is, as we discussed, it conditions, if you want, if you want to ask for leave forgiveness, it is now going to be a condition that you have to be uh, signed up for the customer portal to be eligible. I think that's great. So those are the five main things. If you don't have any questions, we can jump straight into Mark's uh, magic spreadsheet, or I can answer any questions first. Magic. Well, he's, he's, well, he's walking over. Um, sorry, I turned oh, it off. I turned it off. I apologize. I can hear you. Um, so, the all of the restrictions if they go if they get put into place, right? If we end up having to trigger these in August, um, those all revert back to normal again as of the water turning off. And then next season, when the water is pressurized, then we start fresh. Everyone's back to the green and ever, and then we work. From so the, the 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 two provisions that are on, that in the, per the ordinance only are in effect for 2022 would be change in rates and the suspension of the landscape requirement. The other ones would be permanent. Obviously, we're adopting the plan permanently. We are changing the leak forgiveness program uh, to make that a requirement permanently. Mm -hmm. um, and the code amendments to Title Eight are permanent, but the, the code amendments to Title Eight don't have any effect on our operations. They're simply codifying some of the things that we may do year to year. Okay, thank you. So Jeremy, we are adopting the emergency plan yeah. and that will always be in place in the future. The plan, the we're plan adopting itself, the plan. The color coded plan. <clears throat> Correct, but the plan is simply recommendations to staff. The, the plan in and of itself does not trigger any action. Not an action item, right. It, it's right. If so, we were just adopting the plan by itself with nothing else, you arguably could do it by resolution because it's not creating any law. So we put the plan in place. Once the plan's adopted tonight, staff has the ability to implement the plan. Right. So this, that's, why have to have, that's why the ordinance has to have additional parts beyond just adopting the plan because adopting the plan in and of itself doesn't change our code. 
Okay. The other components of the ordinance do that. Okay. Yeah, with the what, what did we design? Oh, those are, those are permanent that last beyond, beyond. We just say if you want to leak forgiveness, you can't get it if you haven't signed up for in, the information that would tell you you have a leak. Yeah, so it's kind of you we guys, do. There was support for that at a retreat, if you remember. We get that last on. minute blitz. Oh, yeah, and sitting here anxiously taking notes at your every win, <laughs> so we can begin broadcasting that. And thank you for keeping Mark in line. It, if you want me, to, I can briefly go over the specific code changes or we can jump straight in. Now. Good, okay. There was, um, Jeremy, you didn't mention your changes that you, oh, were, that you noticed. That thank you. you. There was one recommendation that we missed in, in, before we went to packet. Uh, the, the version in your packet doesn't have a statement that authorizes the city manager to declare a water shortage, that, that color code table. So we recommend adding to the... Um, the ordinance. The ordinance. Uh, the, uh, an additional item, number one, say the city manager or designee may declare a water shortage due to water facility failure, natural disaster, drought, or any other water supply issue. A water shortage declaration will enable actions in the city's water shortage plan to be implemented. Okay. This is making a change to that Title 18 um, that, that you noticed there. So it would basically be creating... Um, I gotta, I gotta look at this again, okay. This would be in section 8.0117, so it would just be a, a number, a sub subsection number one at the very beginning of it. Okay, so question on that. Um, and this is broader than just this issue, but if we give the city manager or his designee the ability to declare an emergency, do we want to have the council have to codify that every three months? So we're not, I, I'm going back to my COVID days where unelected people declared emergencies without elected oversight. There's some truth Is to that. Is it necessary? Well, like when we had the emergency with the mudslide, then we came in as a council really quick and we ratified right, it. Right, right. So, so we give our staff the ability to, to, to declare act. an emergency and act. But do we put in the code that the city council has to come back and within a certain and, period and ratify it or extend it every every few months or something? Is, council, it, is this necessary? Well, councilman, I would clarify that this this code doesn't authorize staff to make any changes external to the organization. So this doesn't say that he can change the rates or he can do that. Those kind of things he he may say we're in red, but we would still have to come back to you for another ordinance if we wanted to change the rates, let's say in 23, or we wanted to spend the code. So this- Understand. Um, but that does allow him to make internal changes. So for instance, if we say there's a water shortage, mm -hmm. we can immediately direct parks to adjust their operations to reduce water and consumption. I want staff to have the ability to act immediately. Right. But then within three weeks, we have to ratify it. Or, or something, I'm, I'm just wondering if, this is, if that's necessary. I, I, it's a bigger issue I get than you're coming. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. I, I mean, I get where you're coming from as well. I don't think it's necessary in here because if you look at it, it's like loss of multiple wells and or CU, CUWCD connections extreme. I mean, that's pretty obvious. I mean, what are we going to do? No, Mark, we really didn't lose any wells. And and also, I, I wanted to add to that as well because this if the second sentence of that proposed language, and it'd be helpful if we had that up on the screen, but... Um, it does say a water shortage declaration will enable actions in the city's water shortage response plan to be. And, but some of those, most of those actions are legislative decisions that would have to come back to the council anyway. So this is just authorizing the city manager to declare that water shortage to then bring actions back to the city. That, that's fine. I, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I, I think you guys understand where I'm coming from. Yeah. <clears throat> because Mail-in balloting, you mean, around the country? With <laughs> it, this sounds, it sounds like you're authorizing him more than, than it actually is. That second sentence just allows him to make that decision so it comes back to you That's for fine. the final, basically, legislative decision. Okay, it's in there. It's magic. Magic spreadsheet, Mark. I've been waiting all night for the spreadsheet. It's, it's on, on the screen. It's it's on page six. I've 
You might want to Wilden is really excited for this. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, basically, they're teasing you. It's yes. the first it's one. The per- the, 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 Can you get bigger than that? <laughs> Karn's eyes are getting old. Come on, go get glasses. <laughs> He's I had to. I had to. He's only helped close. I had to for far. Yeah. Yep, that's great. So we're, we're talking bifocals then, huh? <laughs> he, needs another, he needs another five minute break. <laughs> that's the age of try. <laughs> And, and then I think three and four definitely address your concerns because it doesn't, it says I make recommendations to you when it comes to adjusting the, the duration. I make recommendations okay. to you when it comes to, to you know, if we, if we want to suspend it for a given year landscaping. Right now, the current plan. version of, right now, the current version of the communication. Right now, the current version of the water shortage plan basically requires <coughs> um, the recommendations all, or let me give you an example of what they are. Recommendations are to amend the code, um, amend the utility rates, and and everything everything else that would normally be a legislative decision has to come back to you. So it would just if we have administrative decisions, which would normally be okay for Mark to make anyway, um, those would already he those will be in there and he can make those. So this doesn't. I guess code. what what I'm saying is it it doesn't directly address your point, but. Mm-hmm. In applying and interpret, interpreting, that would be my interpretation. So does this, do you foresee a situation where we would have to have an emergency meeting okay. to make changes for something like this? So, so here's, the way that our utility billing schedule works is it's, it's usually it starts on the 25th of the month and then the next month it gets billed. And so like, for example, a rate change, we may go into, you know, into a different water restriction mode. We're going to announce that. We're going to go public with it. We're going to put that out there. Rate change isn't until 25th. The rate change won't change until the 25th because we can't adjust the schedule. Mid-cycle. Mid-cycle. Yeah. Um, it, it would be virtually impossible to do a read. So that is one of those ones where as much as we'd like to be ahead of the curve, in this particular case, we probably won't be able to jump ahead of the curve that much. So, for example, whatever rate you tell us you want to adopt tonight would be the rate that would be applied on the bill beginning July 25th. Because we don't even have an announcement yet until August 1st or 15th. Well, actually, we'll be making the announcements. No, from the state. Oh, from the state, yeah. Um, well, we'll, talk, we'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> wait, there's more. It's not against the knives. Um, so, so um, you know, in this particular case, you know, the, the, the schedule would be dependent upon the end. So, um, Jeremy, uh, do we have that table in this? No, I can drop it in there. The yeah. the uh, spreadsheet? Uh, table, yeah, spreadsheet table. Or the, tape, the, the color coded table? The color coded table. It's in my, yeah, hold on. It's probably in the packet already. Right? You talking about the one we're all looking at on our screens? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, um, yes. This, this so, one? So, really? Yeah, the, the <laughs> table that you've got in front of you. With the green, yellow, orange, we, red, brown. We would trigger that, and then based on that criteria, we would implement that. So the, the, the one thing that's missing from the exhibits is really kind of this discussion right here. And, and what I did was I tried to pull together a, an example here of a, of, of a rate of allotment that you could do. And again, what I'm trying to do is to demonstrate the allotment where we currently are. So that, 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 it doesn't look great, but, but right here in this section here, um, those allotments. Um, <laughs> that's P1. P1. That's our current condition right now. Yes. Along, everything is wrong. Um, P2, PI2 is, is really us saying what happens when we start to get to a warning phase. And I would say this year we've been in a warning phase with the state talking about a trial all summer, those kinds of things. We're not suggesting any changes to the rates necessarily in this scenario. So in, in either of these scenarios, the bill would be the exact same. We're just starting to notify and we're starting to warn. The next So maybe people would self-regulate. <laughs> right. We've seen some people already started. started and, and we, I did. That's phenomenal. I self-regulated. And that's phenomenal. So <laughs> the great thing we start to get into is, is is what happens when we start to change the allocation. Yep. And so this model, we're showing a, a 10% reduction in the allocation. 
And as you can see, your base bill, and I want to point this out, <coughs> your base bill is actually cheaper. This is a, a four acre lot, and it's assuming a 73,000 gallon usage. Most people don't use that. In fact, there's very few that do use that on that kind of lot. But I wanted to demonstrate how the table works. So for illustrative purposes, your base bill, including your, your base fee with your, your usage, would be $30 per month in, in this particular scenario. And that doesn't change from those first two scenarios. If you reduce the allotment down to 90%, because your usage goes down, technically your bill goes down a little bit, but so is your allotment also been cut. But in this scenario, your base bill goes down. If you're only within... If you stay within your allotment. Your allotment, which is 90% in this particular scenario. So, so you're actually saving money and your allotment is less. Now, again, in previous models, it assumes that you used exactly that 100% of your allotment number yep. when it was an 100% allotment. And so your cost per thousand gallons goes up from $1.11 per thousand gallons. So real quick, your table is showing if you follow the rules and you reduce like you're supposed to, you're actually paying less because you're using less. You're paying less, but you're also your allotment is less. As right. Well. So, but if you're following yeah. the rules and reducing your usage, you're paying for what you use. What a concept. Amazing. It's um, called conservatism. So, so in, the next, in the next scenario here, we go to an 80% uh, allotment or a 20% reduction. Mayor Council, based on, on kind of the conditions that we're seeing right now, we would recommend this. And I know I talked to some of you earlier today and weren't quite sure where we're going to land. We do have one well that we do need to do some work <coughs> with, which is going to have um, pretty big impacts on our ability to provide source. We want to try and do that as quickly as possible so that we can do that before we lose the attention to some of our sources. Yeah. But our recommendation for no. our, Red. the Red. 25th, this is Brown. Um, for tomorrow. Are you yeah, is you this your colors? Got your colors out are you doing P14 <coughs> or P13? That's P4, right? So that's red. So yeah. you want to go into in severe. It's red on your on your ordinance. Right, yes. Correct. That is correct. Uh, didn't they change the last one to brown and make the last one red? No. They, no, they, the way around. They switched it. They made the last one one's red, brown. That one red, and then yeah. the last one brown. That was my. Okay. So, kind of like we'll change. It's not brown, it's like brownish red. It's my chart to match whatever you're Okay, we'll have Chris do a complicated motion. And, and, and set there. So P14 is red in the packet. Yes, yes. So what we're suggesting with this P14 fact. That's the number three, right? One, this two. Is P14. Number four, okay. And so this is P14. We're recommending right now, as of July 25th, we go through the piece of summer comment. And we recommend that you adopt this right structure that would change the, the, the usage. Table. And, and so the emergency rate would be this new table. And let me explain. We built this so that we could model it based on just a multiplier. But when we started looking at it, just doubling this, it would take you to 250. Well, our current culinary <coughs> here rate is, two, is, is 240. And so because we will be supplementing our system with drinking water, we felt like it was probably more appropriate rather than just double this to make this match our culinary rate where we have three tiers in the culinary rate. So again, instead of doubling this T4, this tier four, we have it match the culinary rate. Again, tier five would match the culinary rate. The problem is, is, is if you're using an excessive amount of water, which we would be in this higher category, this highest category, we're saying we would, we would then propose to double that highest tier rate to really stop the overuse of water. Now again, because we're at 80%, this used to be at 250%. That's not that got cranked back because of the allotment being pulled back. And so in this particular scenario, um, we would be recommending higher tier. Now this could be $8, it could be $7, it could be $6. Could be Mark, you, you, to be clear, on. that's that's still 200% of normal, of, of, of level green. Yes. Okay, so if you're using that much, you're way over water. You're way over water, and in fact, <coughs> you can see, a mushroom farmer. Um, your, your tier, again, the table shows the tier. Your tier typically would be 68,000 gallons, but in this scenario, it's reduced down to 43,000 gallons. And so your allotment is getting pulled down. And so, again, if you were to adopt a, a rig structure here that is tied to their allotment amount, then theoretically, you wouldn't have to adjust a different rate table given whether it's the one, two, four, or five scenario. You basically would just say that 
the emergency rate is these is this rate right here. And again, we're keeping the, the base rate for your allotment, and in this scenario, it's eighty percent. We're keeping it the same thirty-five cents for the first portion of your allotment. We're keeping it the same dollar at that second phase of your allotment. And then what we're doing is we're saying this is their drinking water rates here, and we're charging the drinking water rates. And then in this category here, it's very punitive, and it's two times the drinking water rate for that allotment or for that tier. And so, again, you guys can tell us what you want. In this particular case, your base bill is less. Nice. And then if you get into the much higher use categories, you start to see more and more of that. This is just, it's a ton of extra usage here because your, your, your category is so high. We were holding this number static so that you could see the difference if they didn't change their water consumption at all. We, we hope that no one ever does this. And if this came in at, say, you know, 50,000 gallons or something like that, um, you, you'd see it, you know, not being nearly as fast. But again, 73, which again, for just modeling purposes, it shows you over 29,000 gallons, which is just insane given your allotment. They must really like their yard to pay 350 bucks. So, so Mark, the, yeah. the, the, that's what I pay in Draper right now with this, no thing. Here's pressurized irrigation usage. Salt Lake County is a lot higher. Have we looked Twice a year. at the scenario of what happens when 70% of the residents start dragging their hose around and they're putting more tax on the culinary system. Yes, um, we do have, we have looked at that. We do think that in some cases that makes sense. But the problem with that is, is if you do that, you're also paying a sewer fee. Understood, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, have we looked at that on a supply side issue? Yeah, we're, we're, we're telling people to not we're going to we're going to be telling people also to not just go out there and start using their their hose bibs to make up for the lost water. But if they do, we would we have a supply. We issue. would we would run out of secondary because our operations guys keep a close eye on that, and they would shut off the connections. Between the, after a certain point, they would shut off the connections of feeding the drinking water to the secondary, and the secondary would just run out of water. At, at this eighty percent, <laughs> pressure irrigation you can't run out of coal. Right, Correct. right. Our operation guys know that, and there is no way they will allow, they will get out there and they will say, okay, we're going to stop feeding, we can't supplement, and we would have There's to notify the public that keep running. we're out yeah. of secondary because people have abused the culinary use, and now we, we're no longer... And Central able. Utah says they've been able to provide 100% of contracted water. <laughs> and they have. Uh, they have. The, the, the big question here, though, is, is at this 80% allotment, we anticipate that we are going to be supplementing our secondary system drinking water, which is why the, the tying it to the culinary rates makes sense. Yeah, and especially it. if you're in that higher tier, making it extra punitive because you're, you're, you're taking a demand on that system. The other thing, back to your point, the, the, one of the code amendments that we actually added to Title VIII was the only thing that's allowed in times of secondary shortage is hand watering. So if someone were to actually start running automatic, you know, some sort of automatic sprinkling off their hose, but they would be violating, it would be a code violation. They can, that we, yes. that is in the new code. It, that's, how do you, how do you track that? <coughs> someone turns you in? Well, when you're, Just when like your water spikes, code violation, like, I mean, hopefully people don't do it, but if someone was egregiously doing that, okay. have, probably on their bill, issue. we would know. We've had an issue with this in the past and, where people hook up their, their drinking water system to water their yard. Mm -hmm. And it's a big that, that can create problems with, with contamination of the drinking water system. We had to like um, the $10, shut our water. And we had to yeah, you can't, you can't do adding, cross connections, but they adding, can hook a hose up to, their, to yeah. a sprinkler and run that. Right, and so we just kind of strengthened that, that prohibition. And then like Jeremy mentioned, there is a water short. Someone can water trees, shrubs, and vegetable gardens with with culinary water, but not. not so this new code we're adopting means you cannot put a a rotating head on the end of a hose bib hose and run it. Not if there's secondary water available. Yeah, and the other part of this again, we're not telling people you can't use your water in this. We're just saying reduce your it's consumption. Gonna, it's going to so cost within more. The use as much as you want. Well, we're saying use your allotment. Yeah. Then if you're going to go above your allotment, it's punitive. Now, you may look at these rates, and I changed the color to red, so it now matches your table. Um, you may change this and say, hey, those culinary rates that we've got here in this little green box, those aren't enough. In which case, you could tell us, okay, 
what do you want it to be? And we could go back to our multiplier. I think, I think that's good because we're not trying to gouge residents. We're covering the cost of the abuse. We're not yeah, trying I, to make a profit off of a drought. But back to your point, though, and if, if you don't want that as part of the code, we can... Mm -hmm. I, uh, that would be that was modeled after another city's code. That's basically if you have access to secondary water available, if you're you should be using that for your yard. I think it'd be. Um, I I do like hard this. Hard thing to go after, frankly. But I, I, I don't. I see why we have it. Yeah, it would be hard to enforce. And yeah, but if, that if you don't want it, then we can. We I mean, can it's talk. there to to go get the abuser, right? The heavy abuser. Which is why we d determined the most effective drought plan would be to take advantage of our metered secondary, yes. not hire 50 code enforcement <laughs> officers to go. And, and it should be pointed out that, that we're the only city in the state that can do this. No one can do this but us. Secondary, I know. Spanish could. Oh, they have meters now? They, they've had them before us. They were, I think, 2004, 2005. But do they so, have allocations? But, but again, we go off of a methodology where it's tied to their allocation. And again, um, you know, we've tried to anticipate the, the eventualities with this. It's tough. Um, we are we are kind of in a tough spot as a community, and hopefully, if if things turn out better than we're projecting right now, then maybe it's you know it's a it's a you go up to ninety percent in September or something like that. I don't know. So, right. also, so this gives you the flexibility to, to bump up to mustard yellow or whatever we're going to call that. Yeah, it, it would give us that opportunity. With, at the next billing cycle, but again, this is a rate that based on the allocation, and again, we were kind of looking at, at different scenarios based on different, different um, things, but again, if you adopt a static rate table, and then that's driven by your allotment, we found that the allotment number changing really drives that rate, you know, to get the, the hopefully the conservation behavior. But we, we had a very extensive evaluation of all the scenarios today, and this, we, we need all these parts to come together to stay at 80. So we need to make the repairs to the well that we talked about. We need to continue being able to supplement the secondary with drinking water because people don't abuse it. And all those things will allow us to stay no less than 80 the rest of the year. If, if those things don't come together and, you know, I mean, knock on wood, we could drop below 80, but we think we're putting all the game pieces in, pay, in place so we don't have to go below 80. Well, we're not going to run out of culinary because they sent us, Central Utah says they're giving 100% of the allotment. They're guaranteeing that, and so we should be fine. Right. <laughs> so is, is, they also want to sell us an additional contract to be able to carry more water. Mark, is, is, going, to, yes, is we going to level four um, a, a conservative approach? I mean, is that, is that going far enough? Can I tell you, um, I think that if we can get our well back online within the next two weeks, this is the Hail Mary we need that will keep us at 80. If that doesn't happen, then we're having a different conversation when we know the outcome of that well. I, I think it goes into a, a more a more conservative. I, I think 80 is appropriate. You could, you could make the argument, because we are hobbling along right now, the well is producing, but it's... it's about a little more than half of its current production of what it should be producing. And and so again, that's one of our larger wells. So we're kind of in this, we feel that this is a very justified rate. So for us I, at this point. losing this well, we're, we're potentially still gonna lose the canal and the lake in right. about three And weeks. that's our goal. We need to get this well up and running before we lose the Before we lose the canal. We're at 80 now with the, we're at 80 now without the well with the lake. And our goal is to get the well back before the lake drops and stay at 80. And that's why we're trying to be conservative. So yeah, we hope we're not back in front of you in August saying, you know. Is there, is there a reason I, I, I know Stephen had a, a question. I, I was just going to say, I really like this approach because, number one, like, they're going to get a discount when they behave appropriately or me behave appropriately, right, any of us, in, in the event of a, a drought. It, we are in a drought, but a water shortage is what I meant to say. I think the P5, the next one, if we have to go to that, I don't think it's punitive enough. It punitive enough? I, I don't think it is, because at that point, we don't... It's the same, you just lower your allocation. It doesn't change the... No, it's not the same. Uh, I, 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 after we spoke, Stephen, I put this back so that it mirrored the same of P5 and modeled it on a 50% reduction, and you can see what happens... Well, it's just what I'm looking at is P5 T6 is seven dollars and sixty cents at the highest rate, where it's eight dollars up above. Oh, yes, I, I apologize. I fixed it on the spreadsheet that I'm working on. 
you're looking at a oh, static okay. screen. You're looking at the packet, which is old. Okay. Yeah. So, so again, we were just at that point, we were just doubling the 380. When, when, you know, we were talking about this, we thought, well, wait a second, what, how does it model if we keep the same rate structure as a P4 and, and a P5? And then just based on the allotment con, uh, usage, you know, it, it, it adjusts down to that more punitive. So, and, and I know we talked about doing it like a media blitz and things on that. I, I think it'd be good to give some suggestions on here's how you could easily do it. Like a good example is if you water each zone 10 minutes. We've been doing that, yeah. Cut it down to eight minutes. You don't even have to change the number of days. You can change it to eight minutes and you've cut off 20% and you're still and getting Annalise it. has been killing it with the, with the public. Well, I think this is, I'm not being critical of it. I just huh. think all of a sudden... If people don't pay attention, the rates are going to. And I want to put pay on more. public record: the city is cutting its water use by forty percent. So we're 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 trying to be the leader here. We're not only cutting our water use twenty percent. Our parks department. But we are making 40%. sure our trees and bushes are getting. <coughs> Correct. Correct. Because we don't want to lose them. You're right. We're, There's we're, a few developments right. in the city who decide just to take the trees out, right. and then we'll forget that there was supposed right. to be. Trees. No, we're watering trees. We're continuing watering high use areas for recreation, but non, you know, non critical turf areas. We're letting go dormant uh, and anything else. So, yep, sounds. I, good. I could give you a two page SOP of what Parks is doing to make sure that we're, you know, going uh, to the first. As an example, no. I was up at Pinnacle Park the other night playing catch with my boy, and he was commenting at the large brown patches of grass and stuff. It was a chance for me to have a conversation with them about, hey, like we're in the middle of a drought. This is going on, so the city's cutting back. You know, I right. think you know. Hopefully, people are noticing that. You know, our law, our parks may may not be lush and green like we're, we're used to seeing, but at the same time, you know, the the grass isn't dying. You know, it's it's just gone dormant, and it'll come back next year if. We're able to get enough water this, this winter. Could I ask also that HOAs, now we have a contact list, contact them directly because, you know, management companies don't pay attention and that goes directly back to the residents. And mm -hmm. so they will, if they, if the HOAs don't see it, the residents are going to be smoked. Oh, the, the residents in those HOAs will be very frustrated if they do not amend their watering practices and get hit with a higher assessment. Yeah. Absolutely, we get that. We understand that, and so it well, can, what it can take you two weeks for an HOA to do all of their clocks. So what? I, what I'm just asking is, we now have the contacts because we went through the IADU process. Just reach out to the same folks and say, pay attention. Yep. If Absolutely. you call SSD tomorrow, it's going to take them two to three weeks to adjust well, all their clocks. Yep. So like hundreds of yeah. meters. So Mark, so, also with kind of along Ann's lines for marketing. <coughs> What about with, you know, I know the south well's getting down to five feet. Can we get to do a time lapse that we could put on Facebook? You know, because I've had people say, are we really using that much water? If you see one of those ponds drain in the morning, that's like, whoa, we're, we're no, we, taking. We have about six feet of, or five feet of water right now in the Israel Canyon Pond. It would be great to show that pond. We'd show it on a time You know, lapse. fill up and then well, how fast it empties. By morning, you've got a roller skating rink in the bottom. Um, along those lines, and I'm comfortable with the numbers in here. Just, I'm I'm comfortable with those numbers, and we can use those. I'm I'm really, frankly, more concerned about the messaging. And I talked to Mark about this today, and how we get this messaging out. Because we only have what six days till the new billing cycle. Do we have the ability to use something like a a road sign that says, you know, Saratoga Springs water emergency? Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of ways that we get the messaging out. Back. Do we have a road sign? We do have. <laughs> sure, we sure. have we, we can rent them, but we don't have any. I don't think we own any hey, MS signs. But. Jim sort of said it, but we when we when we gave Fat Cats the right to use those boards, they we said if we have a need, we can use those. The com those computer boards for their advertising movies. Even 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 asking Boyer like uh, the big yeah the big sign on Redwood Road where they advertise movies. <coughs> That's oh, that's what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. That's saying the computer <clears throat> yeah. movies, the change. So uh, from a from an advertising thing, um, we've been working with Ann. She's been doing great with getting these um, these messages out Facebook. for conservation. For so yeah, it's not just Facebook. It's the website. It's the city's new, newsletter. Mark. It is 
It is, you know, putting things out. It is going to be doing a press release. And do you want to continue? Yeah, we. Um, I've been creating a mailer that we can mail out to all the residents. We have, um, based off that mailer, we'll have social media posts that will be going out. The top, um, the front page article on the newsletter was always planned to be um, messaging to do with this. Um, we are putting an alert that we are able to on the, the very top of the front page of the website that will then take them to the water shortage response plan page that I have been creating. Um, we are, uh, I have a press release that the first draft is done. We'll be creating a lobby poster that will go downstairs. Um, we will, um, so through the alert system, we have people that have registered on the website to access those alerts. We have about 560 people. And so when I create that alert, it will send an email to them. We will also send an email to all of our um, utility billings through the utility billing and through recreation. So, and so. with your lobby poster, could we work with maybe our three big business partners in the community, Smiths, Costco, and Walmart, to put something up? Because at some point, everybody in, their, in this community- In their entryways. In their entryways. We can ask, I know with a lot of those businesses, there are restrictions that are based on a corporate level, and that's what we ran into with event, um, you know, advertising and things like that, but well, I think we're happy. different than a statewide water, water shortage. <laughs> right. Because, you know, Cause, you know I think if you think about Costco, they've one. got the big breezeway where everybody walks in. Yeah. A poster right so there. So see if they'd allow us to put like an A-frame right. or something <laughs> up in there. The two breezeways at Smith's, right? People walk into both those... There's a lot of people who aren't on social media and things like that. Just, you know, hey, we're in a drought. We're making changes. Go to this website or something. Put or a QR, QR code, code on. on it. Yeah, I'm going to have a QR code on the but lobby. Just, or you could <laughs> ring a bell and hand out flyers. In front. <laughs> could you do here. samples? So um, I, I think, Mayor and Council, we've got the, the vision of what you're looking for, and we'll, we'll start hitting <laughs> that as soon as we can tomorrow. Um, what we do need you to do is, is, if you are comfortable, then we would take this table here and have this table right here become the new drought emergency um, water shortage rate. It would be Exhibit B in the ordinance. It would be Exhibit B in the ordinance. And then basically what the language we would need to add would be that this rate begins at an 80% um, trigger and below. <coughs> so if you're at 80% or lower in your allotment amount, uh, amount then this becomes that rate for that based on that allotment. 80%, yeah, or a 20% okay, so, reduction, a 20% or more sorry, reduction. I'm, I'm looking at our... our Color-coded chart here, DW4. That's drinking water. It's in the drop. Okay, oh, um, Next page. sorry. Okay, PI4, it's 80 to 90%, like, but you're saying 80 or below, so I'm just wanting to make sure I understand. So, so to you, 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 yeah, you're saying we would write it so that if it's, if it's 89 or below. Okay, yeah. Like, if, if, water shortage plan. Table. Yeah, water shortage plan. So at 90... Um, we would still not change the rate table, and then the rate change it, table changes at nine, 89 and mm -hmm. below. Okay. So that, that's sure the verbiage. That, that we're agreeing with Distancy our... Distancy there, yeah. 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 And so then that triggers this allocation and whatever the allotment is. So theoretically, let's say we get to a 50% allotment, it would automatically adjust based on that allotment amount. Is that a systematic thing we can do in our billing, or do someone have to go in and change? We can, we can make these changes in our system and have it be a system-driven, wide. It's like a so, one so cell that one cell that utility plan. billing is not going to sit there with a spreadsheet going, we, we this set there, account lower. Yeah, this we, we can't do that to 11,000 accounts. I know. What we can do, though, is we can adjust the rate table based on the allotment amount and based on this number here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to program this in so that on the 25th, this becomes the new rate table based on your tier and based on that allotment amount. Okay. So what changes the allotment amount for the PI-5? Uh, How does that get to so, so this would be based on the table that you've got in front of you. Based on those critical elements, it would reduce it down further if we have more things. 60, 50, so whatever they do. PI5 is 79% and below. Yeah. Yep. Which is another reason why it makes a lot of sense to start at 89, because your goal is to stop it before it gets to 80. Right. Right. So, 
So that would, th this, this rate table then becomes exhibit B along with that explanation of at nine, 89 and below. But yeah, we would, again, we would recommend that we amend the ordinance uh, <coughs> number two and just clarify that you're adopting the rate table and making the 80% effective. Yeah. Well, sorry, let me open up. I, Where's that ordinance? It's an art thing. Okay, I will entertain wait, 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 a motion wait. from anybody but Porter. <laughs> and Mayor Council. I actually have it written down this time. Well, while he's looking, I, I do think it's really important. We need we need to thank our residents that are conserving right now that already made it, already changed their clocks, that are already being responsible with their consumption. And for those that aren't, you know, we, 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 we plead with them to begin consuming appropriately for the conditions we've got. Where's the motion? Okay. You're all staring at scroll me. Down, Mark, scroll down to right. Up, up, up. We don't. We don't want Third Porter two. to do it, but none of us are. There, going to one more. Two, three, one through five. Yeah, but those are the conditions, right? Of the enactment. So we would. So recommend. You wanted to change item one to the language you said earlier, right? Section one to the language that was proposed by staff earlier. Yeah, okay. And then two, we want to make sure that we're it's triggering at 89%. That the and ex 79%. Ex exhibit be the new rate table and the new rates are triggered at 89%. And 79% respectively. Okay. Uh, I move that we adopt business item five, ordinance 22 31, dated today, changing item one in the ordinance. Uh, to the language which was read by the city engineer earlier in the meeting and changing item or the and uh, uh, changing the exhibits uh, exhibit B in uh, item two to be enacted at 89 percent and 79 percent respectively okay I have a first from councilman Porter do I have a second on that motion I'll second. I have a second, Councilman Podeska. Kevin, you had a comment? I did, yeah. It's actually clarification, not section one in the ordinance, but um, in the actual city code, the, the amendments in exhibit C, it's, it's in section one to the, um, sorry, of the city code. Exhibit C, section one. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's um, okay. Rough. Changing my motion to from section one of the ordinance to section one of his exhibit C of the city code. Amended second. Okay. Amended first, amended second. Any further discussion? Pedesca? Aye. Comber? Aye. Karn? Aye. Porter? Aye. Wilden? Aye. Motion carries. I think we drank more water during lunch. Okay. Now it um, has to. Well, we'll do the last one right here, the uh, eminent domain. That should be, we've been dealing with it for a year. Yeah, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, as, as shown in the, the packet, we have a resolution proposed to basically authorize staff to begin eminent domain proceedings. We did get a response. So as part of the statute, the statute allows an applicant to uh, be heard at this meeting where you authorize staff to move forward. Um, in lieu of attending, well, you, I think you heard that gentleman that was here before, but um, the attorney representing Scott McLaughlin also presented a letter, which is in the packet as well. I just wanted to address a few things about the points that he made. I know it's, I realize it's in the packet, you've probably reviewed it, but I just wanted to address some things. We obviously disagree with their, um, their statement that says the city has not made a good faith effort to, to, to complete negotiations for a voluntary pur purchase. Um, he actually misstates the facts, I probably uh, unintentionally, but we have responded. We've, we've submitted a counter proposal that's in his court right now. Um, so we have responded to his offer and sent him back a counter proposal. Um, just wanted to make sure we, I clarified that. And um, we've had staff meet with, with McLaughlin's representative. In fact, a council, some of the council members have, have met with him to talk about that, that offer. So um, I don't think his, his attorney was informed of, of that counter offer as well as the meetings that we've had. And another thing they allege is the city failed to meet the notice requirements of the statute. That's, that's incorrect too. I called, I called the attorney and asked him what he 
by that. And he said, well, actually, I'm sorry, I emailed him. And he said that we did not mail notice to McLaughlin, which we actually did. We mailed it to his, the correct address listed on the county records. So um, we, al we also sent him a courtesy notice, but he was assuming the courtesy, or courtesy email notice, he must have assumed the email notice was meant to meet the, the mail notice. So I just wanted to clarify those two points. But that's all I have, unless you have any questions. We'll entertain a motion. We'll a I move to approve business item six, resolution authorizing and approving proceedings in eminent domain as ne necessary. Resolution R22-47 date I'll today okay. with any findings and conditions. I'll second. Okay, I have a first from Councilman Carn, second Councilman McComber. Any further discussion? Wilden? Aye. McComber? Aye. Porter? Aye. Tedesca? Aye. Carn? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Back to reports, item six. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Of course. Um, Mayor Council, um, as you're aware, we contracted with Victus Advisors to run a feasibility study for a possible recreation center. Um, they completed their study in February, and at that point, um, with the construction numbers, we decided to ask them to go for uh, another consultant to do an uh, in-depth construction estimate and get us some more accurate numbers on how much a facility would potentially cost. Um, that report came in around $70 million for the concept plan that was there, um, which was a large increase on what the feasibility study originally said. So we felt that we needed to resurvey the community with those new numbers to see where they were at with those new numbers. So. Uh, Victus Advisors could not be here this evening, so I will present the results of that survey, which is in your packet. Um, we'll go from there. So, yes. I think for tonight's um, discussion, we had submitted the, um, the packet, which included the updated numbers, updated feasibility analysis. The updated comparable, you know, other types of venues, what they're charging from an emission rates and things of that nature. I, I think, um, as was discussed a little bit at the retreat, um, the, the big question for us is, are we ready to take this and push this out to the community? And, um, and I think that, that fundamentally, every time we've done surveys, our residents, a large number of the residents have said, hey, we, we think that it's time to move forward with the rec center. And so we've kind of done the background and this analysis was kind of intentional to try and establish what we think it might cost and what it might look like. And um, yes, they, we have done you know, rounds of surveys. We've seen surveys with our general plan when we were doing our general plan update and when we've done our recreation study updates. Um, we've seen large amounts of the populace um, indicate a desire for this. And so this report that we've presented to you that is now made public as part of this packet um, includes looking at various hot springs in addition to a recreation. And so we now have that information um, that we're presenting to you and to the community. Um, at $70 million, we think that it's probably going to be a fairly sizable um, financial obligation to the community. And in the packet, we provided two different funding options. One of them was a, a funding option at approximately 70 million over 25 years. And um, the annual obligation, principal and interest, would come in at about $4.8 million. Um, there's a 30, uh, there's a 30 year option, which comes in a little bit cheaper than that if we were to bond for this for a 30 year obligation. Um, and again, it, it comes in at about 4.4. That's roughly double what our current property tax rate is. Just a clarifying question. Sure. Uh, how, like how, you, you're talking about 25, 30 year. How long do these rec centers go before they have to be refurbished? Like, are we, we going to get 30 years of use before we have to bond to re? That, that's a great city? question. Victus actually included that in their financial analysis. In their financial analysis, they set aside. Um, I want to say around $350,000 a year in a capital reserve fund here. Okay. So this, this is included in there. And so they're, they're recommending 
350 progressing up to about half a million dollars in capital reserves so that we start setting money aside for when it comes time to redo the pumps at the pool or change out the equipment or replace the slides or whatever. And so um, the financial model that they presented for us, and I apologize, Heston, I'm jumping on your financing. You're um, the, the financial model shows that in the in first two years, it's probably upside down. And then they project that including this capital reserve at about year, year three, it becomes profitable. Now, all of this is contingent upon a whole lot of assumptions, a whole lot of operating costs, and you know whether or not people actually you know buy the passes as we project them. But we think that because of the additional hot springs, that there could likely be a large consumption. What we don't what we don't want to do is say okay because of the study, X percent of people think that they're going to do this. The question really is, as a council, do you want to queue this up, let this information stand on its own, and then make this available to the public, and then ask them in a general obligation bond scenario on a tax on a tax question whether they want to vote for it or not. And with that comes all of the obligations of providing arguments for and arguments against, things of that nature. As staff, we need to be neutral as a city. We can't be lobbying necessarily um, one way or the other. Um, but, but ultimately, it comes down to what, what would you like us to do? Because the ability to put it on a bond is a council decision. Um, put it up for a bond. Um, Again, without, um, you know, there's a lot of details, information in this. We would have about 10 years to issue those bonds. So even though the, the public may hypothetically vote in the affirmative, we would have 10 years to issue those bonds. We, we anticipate that it would take a couple years probably to get the studies done, to do some, some more design work and things of that nature. And even if you pulled the trigger, it's going to be a, probably a two-year build anyway, um, you know, for something like this. So again, we think that there's a lot more room for a lot more public input and a lot more things. We had not had an opportunity to discuss this in a public setting. So we wanted to give you the study and give you kind of the bond calculations. And then, you know, what we would need to do is if you decide you want to put this on for a bond election, um, which would be on the November ballot, we would need to do that at our next meeting in August. And the question, there's two questions fundamentally. One, do we do 25 years? We model 25 and 30 years, um, which is, is appropriate. We wouldn't recommend going beyond 30. Um, 20 is probably a little bit too short because you're probably not going to, you know, that, that's a pretty aggressive payment schedule. One thing that I want to point out as well is that as fast as we're growing, hypothetically, let's say the numbers are around $400, and that's what this model shows, about $400 per year per um, for property tax um, for an average home, plus some additional um, expenses for monthly passes and things of that nature. Well, if we're continuing to grow as fast as we are, then that property tax rate will go down over time because we're going to have more homes that will be available to help pay for that. And so that will incrementally go down over the life of the bond. Now, that's not to say that the first year it's going to go from 400 to 300. But theoretically, over time, during the life of that bond, because of our population growth, if it continues on the same trends, the, the individual property tax would go down based on the total assessed value in the city. That's assuming in council in 12 years doesn't raise the rate. That, that, that does assume that. It, it assumes that the bonds don't get refunded. It assumes a lot of things. In fact, right now, because of kind of the, the inflationary situation that we're in, we're even, you know, we're, we've got a, a full 1% built in here because we're not sure what the market's going to look like. So this is a pretty conservative estimate that Zion's pulled together for us. And really the question becomes is, do you want to put this on the council ballot? The other question that runs hand in hand with this is, do we also want to consider a recreation arts and parks tax or a wrap tax, which would also be placed on the ballot um, for for the 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 um, general election, and so um, again, that wrap tax wouldn't necessarily be used to fund this. It could be used to fund operations. Um, it could be used in part to build new parks, to build um, new recreation programs, build new arts programs, build new arts venues. It can be used for a variety of things. And the question, really, fundamentally, for us to you as a council is: Would you like us to bring back something at our next meeting that puts? it up for a vote. Well, I'm not asking you to vote on it tonight. I'm asking you to say, do you want us to bring back something so that it, you can vote on whether you put it on the ballot? It needs to be voted I have a question I, um, before we get to that. Um, with the uh, starting or building a rec sense, let's say we put on the ballot, it passes, whatever. 
when do we get to increase our impact fee on parks? The day it passes, or do we have to have it 20% built, 100% built, before it improves the level of quality of the park? You can charge impact fees for projects that are, are going to be built in the next six years. Now, we would have to pay the proportionate. So, like, for example, we would have to determine if, uh, you know, the capacity of the system once it's built compared to, say, the capacity of what our current residents are going to consume in it. So building this big, like we're proposing to do, allows us to have that for future growth. And so, yes, we could amend our, our park impact fees, and we could we could work on that and have that prepared uh, so that we can then start charging Absolutely, impact we fees need for those to because things. the new people coming in are going to benefit from it, and they need to pay their proportionate share. Now, one thing... Right. Yeah. And one I'm thing, just saying, for, as soon as it gets a vote, Mark answered my question, is, as soon as it's voted on, let's say November 10th, we know it passes, we need to immediately start to... But we also have to give credit for the property taxes that they're going to end up paying for it as well. So we'll have to fa figure that in. So whatever they're going to pay in property taxes, so someone coming along in year 20 is going to pay a much higher impact fee sure. than someone who's been paying for it for the full... 20 years. You know, You're great with spreadsheets now. So I'm sure you'll figure yeah, that so, out. So yeah, we can do that. We certainly <laughs> can add that to it. So again, that can be that. Can and then be my, last part of that calculus. my last question or comment. Oh, sorry, Kevin. Yeah, state, state says that has to be spent or encumbered. So the vote yes would be an encumbered. Right. Yeah. Or so you that, can, before you can add that into the formula to, add, to make that a system improvement. So, so encumbering is, is encumbered as of the time <laughs> the bond passes. Yeah, so that's a good point. Thank you for the clarification. My last thing is, is at 25 or 30 years, whatever we end up determining, um, is there in the rules or in the law, in the ordinance saying that the property taxes would immediately be reversed back to, back to the residents? So their tax rates will immediately go down because I don't want whatever, whoever's in charge in 25 or 30 years to say, ooh, look at all this money and then take it and use it somewhere else because it was for the rec center and only the rec center. So when the bond is paid off, the tax rate the tax rate goes back down. The tax rate automatically goes down. That doesn't mean that they won't do what Alpine School District does. Right. Issue a new bond on top. So of it the automatically state. does. Your taxes are staying the same because we issued a new. So bond. it does automatically go down as soon as it's paid off, and if it's paid off early, it automatically will go down at that point. Okay. Good. Thank you. That was uh, my questions. Great. Um, what other questions do you have? So bad for Hess. He stayed here the whole time, and we've I, already I had seen a huge presentation. This. <laughs> I have other questions, but I, it, it sounds like it's coming back at our next meeting, and so I, I figure we can have a full throated discussion then. But uh, the, uh, this would be the August. This, the, we, if you recall, the first meeting in August. We're switching to the, the 5th, next week. We're switching to the twelfth, I believe. Because so many people. Because have. we have only three. We have two council members and the mayor. That would be next meeting. Ninth, sorry, ninth. Thank you. But to, to, you know, what Councilman Karn said, I think, you know, this is an item of public interest. It is something that a lot of residents have been very vocal about. And so I do think we need to have a public meeting and discussion about it. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we will continue to make this information available for the next discussion. So for those interested, they that and, and look at this information. Um, again, we need to remain, you know, somewhat neutral on that discussion, but we will make that information available. Okay. So uh, next session. Next session, wrap tax as well as recreation bond. Okay. Will those Will there be public comment available, or only during just the general public comment? I, I think that those you could you could certainly hold public hearings on those. I don't know if it's required, but you certainly could hold public hearings. I would. I would. Um, the only concern that I would have is, is that we don't end up, you know, sitting for, you know. So in the past when we had bees and others, we did it during the general open public comment. And, and then mayor, like in previous mayors, and I, I did it when I was mayor pro temp, is I said, if your, ta if your comment is similar to this one, raise your hand. So that way we can get an idea that it's the exact same words that are going to be said by 30 people instead of having 30 people go up and talk three minutes each. So Jim can handle the group that way, and that works really well. We can also limit it to 30 minutes of the meeting, right, Mark? The old public comment. Public input. Um, we'll, we'll double check on that and have that answer for you next. 
Yeah, there. I, I believe in the statute it says a yeah, public hearing required. So this is even after it's passed by election. Um, there would still need to be a public hearing. Um, I think. I think. Yeah, that's what you're asking, right? Whether they're I'm asking at the next saying in two weeks. In or, two weeks, when we we're gonna have a vote to put it on the ballot or not? Is there is there an opportunity there for the public to comment? Oh, uh, before putting it on the ballot. Right. Mm -hmm. If they want it on the ballot or not. Just to, as part of the public meeting. It, right. If we could, we'll research if it's a requirement. And even if it's not a requirement, are, are three of you saying you'd like to see it as a public hearing regardless? I don't want to see it as a public hearing because it becomes a debate. I think you do it at the general um, public input part because you don't want a back and forth. Trust me, I've done this for 13 years. You do not want a back and forth with people in the audience. You do it during the public input. You get all their thoughts, and then we do our business. We yeah. run our business. We're not and if they become unruly, they get removed. I, I don't want on a public hearing because we're not talking about passing a bond. Right. We're You're talking just about do we want to give people free choice to decide what residents have been clamoring? Some, obviously not all. Yeah, you pretty split, but been clamoring for. It, it's a legislative. So if, it, if it does require a public hearing before and before, before, I'm sorry, I thought you asked the before question. Before putting it on the ballot, it requires public hearing. Yeah, well, no, it, it's, so what it says, it says no sooner than 30 days before the day on which the notice of election is published, that's when you hold the public hearing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's, we'll it's kind of. Hold the public hearing at one of our meetings. In October or September. During the right. Yeah. Well, before the notice November. before the notice of election goes out. So oh. yeah. But what what would the public hearing be for? I don't just, uh, again, I know it's required. I just don't understand what it's for. I mean, we it's, it's, it's it's so people can come try and convince their fellow citizens. So it's not to convince the council to do anything. We've already it's made our decision to make a public point. statement about yeah. About it goes on the okay. record. Yeah. That's okay, because that's a different thing. Um, so we've, we've got our marching instructions on that. And then, um, again, thank you so very much. We appreciate your time and patience. And thanks to Heston and his team. They've done a lot of yes. the. I, I took it over. Sorry, man. I, I owe you one. Okay. But, right. but um, can we get that on record? He owes Heston lunch. <laughs> Heston has done a tremendous job working with the consultants to get the study to this point. And we do appreciate his feedback and input on that. Not only that, but can you please express my gratitude for all of the ex excellent work they've done. Whether we like it or not, whether we're pro rec or not, they have done an excellent job yeah. in, in this amount of detail. Yeah. Cool. Appreciate that. I'll, I'll pass that on. Question while you hear information we need. topic. Yeah. How's your new space coming? Um, it's a good, good question. Um, I believe it's getting closer. Uh, I think the ultimate thing is furniture won't be here till August. So two weeks. Um, furniture. We're waiting on furniture. Um, will be the last thing. But I think power. We're pretty close. All the buildings are tied in. We're just waiting for Rocky Mountain Power to actually it's, plug it so in. So what we can do is when they're powered up, we can actually move them in on temporary furniture and you know get them going um, down there. If, hey, we did it before when we moved downstairs. So <coughs> it's not unprecedented. Yeah. And we happen to have a, a, a supply of them, so we can certainly get them moving as quickly as possible. Do you, do you have power down there oh. now? No, no. <laughs> still hasn't been plugged in yet. Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain Power still has to, Rocky Mountain Power still has some work they have to do, and then we have some internal electri electrical work that needs okay. to be done inside. I, th I think that's pretty close. I talked to the electricians yesterday, and I think yeah. they were pretty much They're pumping close. that up so. yesterday and this week, but. I, I'm sorry, I just need to clarify. There's public hearing is after the election. My bad. So if you want us to have a public hearing, public hearing after or just, yeah. Do you do you we have to talk but about we have to fulfill upon. Oh, okay. But we have to you're sit. Come in and say, you can't wait 10 years. If you do, you're out. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. But we, it's, you know it's, I mean? it's, yeah. There are a lot of steps afterwards. I mean, if, if you think it's bad now, it's like <laughs> there's three times as many steps afterwards um, that we have to go through. But we do have to send out. Um, if it makes you feel comfortable, it, it does. Yeah. So the council is going to have, you're going to have like political heat after it. So okay. just, just so you know. It, but it, it'll also, be a party that's in motion. It does. I wanted to mention too, just if it helps um, resolve any of your concerns, the advanced public notice that has to go out is very strict with with the bonds. Okay. So there will be enhanced public notice. 
Perfect. Okay, Councilman Wilden, you had one question before we put this item to bed. All right, Mark, to clarify your comment you made before, we're just doing it as a regular business item or a public input item? The direction you gave us, if it's, if it's not required, we would not do it as a public hearing, and wishing to speak to it would do it in the general comment section. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. Perfect. Okay. But, but if, if we do have bond council working on the, the geo bond issue and so if they come back and tell us it's required we'll do it I, I don't know the answer to it that's why i was saying okay. we'll we'll come back with you on that perfect okay that is the end of our policy session we do have need for closed session so made. all in fit uh, second. second second got a second council first councilman comber second councilman pedesca all in favor aye. aye any opposed motion carries we'll go to closed session <laughs> We haven't gone this long.